Hi everyone, Zach here, and welcome to the prep video for lesson four in this series on developing a survival game. This tutorial series has been brought to you by my Patreon sponsors, like Random Number Generator. In this video, we'll be looking at elements related to our sprint system. So in the tutorial itself, we're going to do two main things. We're going to create a basic sprint system. And this basic sprint system itself will have two parts. We'll have a press and release system. So for example, on keyboard, this is when you hold the shift key down to sprint and release the shift key to resume walking. We'll also have a sprint lock system or an always sprinting system. An example of this, and what we'll actually be doing in the tutorial, is using the caps lock key where you press it once and you can don't have to hold it down and you continue to sprint after pressing it and then you press it a second time to stop sprinting in addition to this we'll also look at how to store character movement speeds we're going to do so because the way we work is we're going to set our sprint speed to be double our walk speed well if we hard code that in then if you change your walk speed, you have to change your sprint speed by hand. We're gonna do it so that when you change your walk speed, everything else automatically will change based on your settings. Now, it's a fairly simple setup, but I haven't seen too many tutorials do it. We'll also do a little bit of update on the inverse um, code from earlier, cause I think it might be a bit backwards. Um, I still might be off on that. I might've had a couple of glitches, but we'll, we'll explore that later on. So we're going to use something known as the character movement component. And you'll have seen this on the base character previously. Now there is something to be aware of. Epic themselves say, you know, that's a good tool for prototyping and for rapid testing. But for a, a proper game, you should be making your own version of this because there are things in there that we don't need. It, it's very bloated. There are, are components and elements in there that just aren't useful. But for a tutorial, for rapid prototyping, for simple games, it's perfectly fine. It works. We can ignore the extra stuff and not use it, but they do recommend creating your own component. So what is this character movement component? Well, it's an actor component. Well, what's an actor component? An actor component is special. It's a special object that stores or encapsulates specific functions, variables, uh, scripts, macros related to project specific elements. So in this case, if you have a flying game, you're, you're not gonna need a, a character movement component where if, you're, if your pawn is just a, a floating pawn. In fact, there's actually a component for that. And in this case, what we're looking at is an encapsulation of methods for movement. So I have bolded encapsulation as a reminder for our OOP principles from the last set of videos. So these methods include things like walking, falling, swimming, flying. Um, you probably don't need flying uh, for this video or this series. And another thing to note about these is that they're set up to be replicated, which means they're set up for multiplayer by default. Just as a note, we will not be doing replication in this series. And as part of this encapsulation, it also stores movement variables. So our max walk speed, our sprint speed, and our crouch speed. Give you an idea why I was talking about storing these and updating them. So you can update the variables on the details panel of your character. Well, if you do that and you're changing something or hard coding something based on that, then you need to update that hard coding. We're going to avoid that. And instead of hard coding it, we're going to do is have a, a system that will automatically update our sprint speeds based on what our max walk speed is. So we can easily switch between the two. And as a note, because I realize some of you might be new to UE4 and don't know some of the uh, shortcuts or hotkeys. There are times where I'll be duplicating nodes. You can you know, highlight nodes and do control C or control X 
to uh, copy or cut respectively and control V to paste. Alternatively, you can highlight the nodes you want and do control W. It will paste the nodes wherever your mouse is. Just thought that might be useful to be aware of. And then let's talk about a node we're going to use for the sprint lock, and that is the flip-flop node. So the flip-flop, as I said, is a node, and there's a lovely picture of it. And you'll notice with this flip-flop that we, we have an A right here and a B right there. And that is how our code is able to know what to do. So think about this like a light switch in the sense that if you activate it once, it does A. So if you, you come, come into here the first time, it then goes to A. The second time you do it, because it's already done A, it, you come in, it's going to go in and go to B. So it turns the light on and then off. And then the third time you do it, it goes back into A, and the fourth time back into B. So it's a very useful tool like that. And the thing to know about this is it doesn't matter what activates it. So let's say we have, let's I'm going to draw just a, a blue little X here. Let's say we have one thing there, and let's have a, a green X here. And both the green and the blue plug into this flip-flop. Let's say the green, the blue goes first. So the blue comes in, it then goes to the A here and activates A. Well, then let's say something triggers this green thing. And green comes in, and it doesn't go, well, I've never activated this flip-flop. The flip-flop goes, I've already been activated, and directs green down to B, and fires B off instead of A. Now, why is this important? Sorry for the bad drawing, by the way. Why is this important? Well, it's going to affect how our sprint system works. Because in our sprint system, we are going to use this as a way to, when we run out of stamina, turn off our sprint system. Okay, that said, I'm going to have some challenges for you to help sort of master the concepts around OOP and what we're doing in today's tutorial. three for you. And then one of them, I actually give you the solution in the video, uh, but I, I want you to just try it out, see how it works. Um, and I'm going to tell you something I didn't say in, in the video that makes it a little bit easier. That said, these challenges do build on each other. So challenge one, this is for uh, practicing our polymorphism. In the tutorial, I'm going to create two functions. One is called set is sprinting. One is called set is walking. So these two functions can just become one function. You don't need both. So first pick one that you want to, to keep. And then in the one you want to keep, I want you to add in a Boolean based argument. So this is on the input node, add a bool. And you're going to use this bool to set the Boolean variable inside the function. So for example, the, the Boolean variable is is sprinting. And if you use an input, you can set it there. Now, the next thing after this I want you to do, and this is really how you're going to get rid of having both of the um, set is sprinting, set is walking, because this involves changing the character's movement speeds, is use the bool, the one that I've just mentioned, the one that's already in the video, the set is sprinting one, because um, we set is sprinting to true, and the set is sprinting, set is sprinting to false, and the set is walking. So use that bool as a selector and in the selector a selector of floats have the return value go to the movement speed uh, setter and then as i said consider if you need both functions or just one and as i said you need just one you can get rid of the other one because it's now doing both we have a polymorphic function and thus slightly better oop design next Instead of hard coding true or false on the always sprint, use the flip-flop. So if you notice on the last slide, the flip-flop has that is a bool at the bottom. You can plug that in. And I show you how to do this around the sixth minute in the video. That said, in fact, with the way it's set up, you can plug A and B into the same bool. And then just have the is a plugged directly into there. Now, all of that said, what you're going to do as a third potential challenge is combine these two. 
and we're going to update the always sprinting function. So the always sprinting function, well, I want you to take both of these things from above. Um, and you'll notice that in the video, the always sprinting function uses a set is sprinting set is walking functions. So you can, you're only going to need one of them. Thus it's already streamlined and you can use the flip flop to set some other stuff up. So consider how you might do that in creating a more streamlined and better OOP version of our always sprinting uh, set of nodes. And, and that said, the tutorial is ready. It's already up. I hope you enjoy the lesson. And if you have any questions, please let me know in the comments below. Once again, please consider subscribing and hitting the notify icon or at least liking this video. And as always, I hope that you have a wonderful day.